Majestically situated where the mountains meet the sea, Vancouver is home to over half a million people. As the central business district of British Columbia and the third largest city in Canada, Vancouver is in a region of over 2 million people and covers a land area of 113 square kilometers. With its rich diversity and urban splendor, Vancouver may just be coming of age as a city, but its history spans far back in time. From time immemorial, segments of the Coast Salish people, the ancestors of the Squamish, Burrard, Tsleil-Waututh, Musqueam, Lillooet, Coquitlam, Katsi, Sawasan, Semiamu, and other native bands resided in the area now known as the City of Vancouver. They settled along the Fraser River, Burrard Inlet, and English Bay, where a rich source of salmon, lush forest, wildlife and seafood provided abundant West Coast living. European explorers didn't arrive in the area until the late 1700s. Britain and Spain were in a race to claim the Northwest Coast and its potential trade routes. In 1778, Britain's captain James Cook set foot on Nootka Sound on western Vancouver Island, but didn't reach the mainland. In 1791, Jose Maria Narvaez of Spain became the first European to reach this region. In 1792, British captain George Vancouver explored and mapped the Pacific Northwest coast. He entered Burrard Inlet and named many local sites. The British and Spanish explorers maintained a friendly relationship, but eventually Spain withdrew from further exploration of the region. When the city was named, it was Captain Vancouver who was recognized. Fur trading posts were established inland during the 1800s, but it wasn't until gold was discovered on the Fraser River in 1858 that settlement really took off. By the 1860s, lumber mills were sprouting up along the shorelines, bringing with them more settlers and businesses. The first saloon was built on Burrard Inlet by riverboat captain John Gassy Jack Dayton. The area was dubbed Gastown and grew steadily into a town site called Granville. When the Canadian Pacific Railway agreed to extend its Trans-Canada Rail Line from Port Moody west to the Granville town site, the area was transformed. With a population of a thousand, on April 6, 1886, Granville Townsite was officially incorporated as the city of Vancouver. Only two months later, Vancouver was hit by a massive fire that destroyed most of the buildings, including City Hall. But the fire didn't slow progress. Just days after the blaze, City Council held a meeting using a tent as a makeshift council chamber. A year later, electricity is switched on for the first time in Vancouver, and water arrives from the Capilano River piped under the First Narrows Bridge the following spring. Just before the turn of the century, more than 100,000 people headed to the Yukon for the Klondike Gold Rush. Vancouver enjoyed a population and business boom when many of the prospectors settled here. The construction of the National Railway and the growth of fish canneries and other industries in Vancouver brought waves of immigrant workers, mostly from China, Japan and India. The ethnic minorities suffered racial discrimination and segregation. Race riots define the city's darkest days in its struggle toward maturity. When the Panama Canal was opened in 1914, it brought more shipping to Vancouver and helped establish the city's position as a leading port. However, the city's growth was halted by the outbreak of World War I. In 1936, a new city hall was completed, replacing the one that was located near the Carnegie Center in Chinatown. City Hall's design features Art Deco details, a lobby with imported Italian marble, and bronze doorknobs and lock plates. Vancouver suffered through the depression of the 20s and 30s like cities around the world, but World War II reignited the economy. People from other parts of BC and Canada streamed into Vancouver to work in shipyards and munition plants. The post-war era saw Vancouver grow by leaps and bounds. In 1954, Vancouver hosted the British Empire Games and constructed Empire Stadium for events. 
This was where sprinters Roger Bannister of Britain and Australian John Landry ran the Miracle Mile in under four minutes for the first time in history. In the following decades, high-rises and office buildings popped up all over the downtown core, and the West End was on its way to becoming one of the most densely populated urban areas in North America. Many community projects such as Granville Island and Robson Square were developed. Through the 60s and 70s, Vancouver became known for activism and counterculture and was dubbed the hippie capital of Canada. In 1967, an environmental group was born here that would become the internationally known Greenpeace Foundation. In 1986, Vancouver celebrated its 100th birthday and boosted its international profile by hosting the Expo World's Fair. Along with Expo came new construction as Vancouver added BC Place Stadium, Science World, the Vancouver Convention and Exhibition Centre and the SkyTrain system to its landscape. The immigration that built the city has continued steadily and made Vancouver a vibrant, multicultural family of communities. More than one-third of residents speak a language other than English. Made up of 23 diverse neighborhoods and governed by the mayor and 10 councillors elected at large every three years, Vancouver is also the only city in Canada to have an elected Board of Parks and Recreation. The Park Board maintains over 200 parks, including the city's crown jewel, Stanley Park, and 40 recreational facilities adding to the city's cultural richness and splendor. While the industries that originally fueled the city, forestry, fishing and trade, are still key parts of Vancouver's economy, the city has enjoyed the growth of new industries and is one of the most popular tourist destinations in North America. Vancouver has blossomed into a city of parks and glass towers and neighborhoods adorned with greenways and winding seawalls where people live, work and play nearby. It is known for its high density livability and inviting urban design features at the street level that define the West Coast lifestyle. It's been coined the Vancouver model by planners and urban designers around the world. In 2010, Vancouver hosted the Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games. Preparations included improvements to the city's infrastructure, such as the new rapid transit line from downtown to the airport, as well as the construction of various Olympic venues. The 2010 Games celebration brought international attention to Vancouver, billions in economic benefits, and invigorated a heightened sense of pride residents have in their city and in the privilege of being a Canadian citizen. The Games infused lasting physical, social, economic and environmental legacies that will help Vancouver continue to be one of the most spectacular places in the world to live. As we look to the future, we've come to realize how important it is to be a sustainable city. Vancouver has set an ambitious goal to become the greenest city in the world by 2020, to ensure a healthy, natural and built environment for generations to come. We're integrating sustainability into all aspects of the city's operations and development with goals to reduce vehicle traffic and plan primarily for walking, cycling and transit use. We're incorporating new green technology in office buildings and housing and creating a green economy. As we move through the second decade of the 21st century, Vancouver is the city it was always meant to be. Dynamic and vibrant, welcoming to people from around the world, purposefully sustainable and naturally beautiful.